It's Tuesday, August 4th, and this is now on HNN. The Second Amendment is a fundamental right. Honolulu police hold a public hearing on open carry gun rules following a high court decision. North Korea sends another missile soaring over Japan in an escalation of tensions. Thailand has opened to tourists with no restrictions. I'm Wendy Gillette in Bangkok. How the country is trying to entice Americans to return. These stories plus a rock shelf below a popular East Oahu lookout collapses. Details coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thank you for watching. This is now we've got a lot of news to get to today. That's right. The Honolulu Police Department is revising its concealed carry rules. That's today's Talker Story. So back in June, the Supreme Court ruled that law abiding Americans have the right to carry a gun outside the home for self defense. Four months later, Oahu is about to start changing its rules to comply with that landmark ruling. This is a public hearing and an opportunity for you to provide comments. So today, the Honolulu Police Department is holding a public hearing on proposed changes to those gun rules. Kevin J. Cole, Colonel, United States Air Force, retired. The government trusted me with weapons. I used to fly B-52s. I looked at these uh, rules. You wouldn't place these on people to vote when you place similar rules for people to exercise the freedom of speech and worship. That had been done in the past. These are hurdles. I am a citizen. I am a, not the threat. It appears to be clear that officials still want to make it very difficult to get a license for a concealed or open carry here on Oahu. For example, applicants have to go through an exhaustive training and application process as well as an extensive background check. My name is Kevin O'Leary. Basically, uh, I think you guys are on the right track, so I'm not here to disagree with your changes in your procedures. I mean, who better uh, to be concerned with hundreds or thousands of concealed weapons walking around on our streets than the HPD? You had your procedures in place over the years for a reason, obviously. As HPD tries to change its policies, Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi is asking the city council to pass new laws limiting where guns are allowed. The mayor says he wants guns banned in so-called sensitive places such as schools, government buildings, parks, and voting locations, also public transportation. Meanwhile, today, the Hawaii County Council is considering a very similar proposal to what Mayor Blangiardi is talking about. It's called Bill 220. Here's some of what happened at today's meeting. People say we need good guys with guns to stop the bad guys. Well, once in a great while that happens, not very often. Our reporters and producers are following this story very closely. We'll have an update for you on later editions of Hawaii News Now. Now, the skies may have just become safer today after the FAA unveiled a new rule for flight attendants. Joining us now is Chris Wynn from our nation's capital with more on that. Aloha, Chris. Aloha, Ashley. Yeah, the airlines now have 90 days to comply with this new rule. It is decades in the making and is meant to keep flight attendants and passengers safe. For years, frustrated flight attendants have been pushing for change. This started in the late 80s as flight attendants were identifying the problems with fatigue. Flight attendants flying fatigued, sometimes on back-to-back -back flights, all while being on the front lines in the skies. Sometimes the flight attendants are the first person that a, a passenger sees when something goes wrong. We are the first person, you know, after they pass through security, after they check their bags, we have to deal with the brunt of the frustration in airline travel right now. Compensate us. Give us the rest that we need. Now, the FAA has announced a new rule that extends the minimum mandated rest period for flight attendants from 9 to 10 consecutive hours between shifts when scheduled for a duty period of 14 hours or less. Flight attendants had even fewer rest hours than pilots. 
I worked alongside them, travel with them, and I can tell you firsthand that well-rested crew members are important to safety. Despite the big win, airline activists say their fight is far from over. We continue to make this one standard of safety and continue to press forward to ensure that this minimum rest is also applied for cargo pilots. And actually, believe it or not, a variation of this rule was first proposed back in 1994. Congress didn't give the green light until 2018, but it was then halted by the Trump administration. Reporting here in Washington, I'm Chris Wynn, Hawaii News Now. Now, Chris, Ashley? of course, this is great news for flight attendants, but with the busy, you know, winter travel season coming up, could this lead to more flight delays? Well, it's hard to say because several of the big airlines had already implemented this rule in recent years. So at the very least, this sets a uh, minimum standard across the board. But as you know, the industry as a whole is dealing with staffing shortages. So they're going to need to ramp up their hiring uh, in the months and years to come to deal with these shortages. Ashley? All right, Chris, Chris Wynn joining us from Washington, D.C. Appreciate the time, Chris. An update to pass along on those three suspicious packages found at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, HPD closed Kamehameha Highway and Brocher Gate around 5.30 yesterday evening. We're told the packages were examined by explosive experts. The area was eventually declared safe around 9.30 at night. No details have been released on what the items actually turned out to be. HPD confirms a 32-year-old male was taken into police custody last night and transported to a medical facility for evaluation. He has not been arrested at this time. A well-placed source tells Hawaii News Now that the incident did not have any connection to what happened over at the airport a few miles away. So let's talk about what happened at DKI. It started around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We have multiple sources telling us a bag contained a device with wires and other components that looked like an explosive. Authorities evacuated six baggage claim areas and shut down two gates inside Terminal 2. HPD responded with its bomb disposal robot. No word yet on what that suspicious package actually was. The FBI declined to give us any information. In the end, six Southwest flights were delayed. Well, with a new missile test, North Korea has sharply escalated its confrontation with the U.S. and its allies. Elizabeth Palmer has that story. Coastal communities in northern Japan woke up to the sound of sirens and warnings to prepare to evacuate. North Korea fired the missile from near its border with China, right over Japan. It took 22 minutes to fly 2,800 miles, a record distance for a North Korean missile, and crash into the sea. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida condemned the launch. It was, he said, a reckless act. The news was big and ominous enough for a special edition of the Yomiuri newspaper in Tokyo, spelling out the details to startled commuters. Analysts believe the missile was likely the huge Hwasong-12 on view in a military parade in January. Today's is the latest and most hostile of what's been a bumper year of 23 separate launches, and the first since 2017 to be aimed over Japan. That was at the last low point in North Korean relations, just before President Trump's attempt to negotiate with the leader Kim Jong-un. So far this time, Kim hasn't said a thing, but his message is clear. He is both angered and threatened by America's growing military alliance with two of his neighbors in the region, South Korea and Japan. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Tokyo. A rock shelf has collapsed on the Ka'iwi coastline in East Oahu. This happened just below the Lanai Lookout located between Hanauma Bay and Sandy Beach Park. The area is known to be a popular spot for sightseeing and fishing. Now the rocks may have come down over the weekend. HNN has reached out to the city to see if it plans on closing the area.
In Florida, the search for Hurricane Ian survivors continues. It's been six days since the storm made landfall there, and the death toll has risen to now over more than 100. Chris Pallone has more from Fort Myers Beach. In hard hit Fort Myers Beach. Search and rescue teams are going door to door, making sure everyone who can be saved is. That requires very extensive, tedious, very slow, methodical searching. They're combing every structure, home, businesses, even vehicles. The Lee County Sheriff says the intensive search will last three or four more days. At least 55 people who didn't make it were found in this county. And those numbers could go up. I pray to God again that they don't. But until we go through the rubble, until we see exactly what we have, we're not certain who's missing and what those numbers will be. Those who did stay home during Ian now reflecting on what was lost and what could have been lost. Big mistake, big mistake. Inland, Ian's effects still being felt. The St. Cloud community just won dealing with flooding from rising rivers. Like a lot of water, but I never see something like this in my life. Back in Fort Myers Beach, for those now starting over, simple things bring the greatest joy. Go in the house and turn the air on, the power's on. Are you kidding me? just came on. A light moment in a time of overwhelming darkness. Amidst questions whether this county, Lee County, waited too long to issue mandatory evacuations before the storm, local and state officials say no. They say people in this area know to prepare for hurricanes starting in June. In Fort Myers Beach, Florida, Chris Pallone, NBC News. Thanks for that update there, Chris. We'll continue to follow the devastation from Hurricane Ian on later editions of Hawaii News Now. And we also have an updated story posted on your H&N digital platforms as well. Let's take you live outside. And boy, oh boy, is fall upon us. I just checked the temperature for this beautiful city, Pittsburgh, 59 degrees mm -hmm. right now compared to our 81. Let's see what the weather is shaping up to be like right here at home. Here's Guy Hoggy. And because of those slower winds starting on Thursday, we could see these afternoon downpours, but they won't be widespread, right? And also, there's a massive moisture coming up towards the state between Friday and Saturday with more scattered showers. So it could be a little damp for the Ironman. Remember, Ironman runs Thursday and on Saturday with a break in between. So again, trade winds today with a few windward and mulkish showers. And again, Maui and the Big Island could get some heavy rain, maybe some isolated thunderstorms only for the east end of the state. Other than that, lots of sunshine expected today and tomorrow. We've been talking about this a lot. More Asian countries are dropping COVID restrictions, which is making it easy for tourists to get there. Wendy Gillette takes a look at the changes. Whitney and Chris Mosley from Houston surveyed the city of Bangkok from the 64th floor of Labua at State Tower while traveling in Thailand for several weeks, shortly before the country dropped entry restrictions for tourists. Honestly, the tourism, it's going to be really nice to have it back in some of the areas. Almost 40 million tourists visited Thailand in 2019 before the pandemic hit. That was when Bangkok was ranked the world's most visited city for the fourth straight year. But a lot has happened since then. For much of the pandemic, Thailand had a complicated system of quarantines for anyone entering the country, which discouraged tourism. And that was devastating for the economy, considering that in 2019, international travelers made up an estimated 60 percent of tourism spending. The sector accounts for about a fifth of the country's gross domestic product and employment. More than one million Americans visited Thailand in 2019. We understand that we won't get back to, you know, over one million visitors right away. But our goal is to ensure that we continue the process of promoting to quality tourists. Labua, which has six bars and four restaurants, including two with two Michelin stars, relied on their profits the past couple years. What people missed during COVID is real experiences. We got special rates to stay at Labua and Capella, a new Bangkok hotel with elegant design, riverside suites and water views from a one Michelin starred restaurant that opened during the pandemic. It's been very, uh, very challenging to say the least. That said, we have discovered an amazing uh, local market that was just absolutely 
famished for travel. The hope is that international tourism will rebound to pre-pandemic levels in the next couple of years. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Bangkok, Thailand. Elon Musk is offering to go through with his original proposal to buy Twitter for $44 billion. The Tesla CEO said he notified Twitter of plans to go through with the deal. A trial seeking to compel Musk to buy the social media platform is set to start in Delaware in less than two weeks. Trading in Twitter's stock had been halted for much of the day pending release of the news, and it resumed trading late today and soared in price. The queen of country music, Loretta Lynn, has died. Her family says she passed away today in her Tennessee home. Stephanie Elam has more. Loretta Lynn's rags to riches story is well known. A coal miner's daughter who became the queen of country music. She was the second of Clara and Melvin Webb's eight children. Born in Butcher Hollow, part of the Appalachia Hill country in Kentucky. Her life during the Great Depression didn't offer many advantages. She grew up without electricity, indoor plumbing, and only completed the eighth grade. As a young teen, she married Oliver Vanetta Lynn, whom she called by the nickname Do or Doolittle. He was 21. A decade later, Loretta Lynn was a mother of four, playing guitar and writing songs at home. With her husband's encouragement, she entered a talent competition and was spotted by a record producer. Her first song, Honky Tonk Girl, was a minor hit, and the Lynn family moved to Nashville. Her marriage had its share of troubles, many of which spilled over into her songs. You ain't woman enough to take my man. Lynn said her husband had problems with alcohol and her long absences on the road. They went on to have a total of six kids, but family life was not always harmonious. Touring took a toll on her health. She battled chronic illnesses and exhaustion. Her best-selling autobiography chronicled her hardships, heartaches, and rise to stardom. I can't sing in front of people. I just can't. Sissy Spacek won an Oscar playing her on the screen. Well, I was born to call. In 2004, Lynn would make a huge comeback recording the highly acclaimed album Van Leer Rose, produced by Jack White. She would be nominated for five Grammys for the album, winning two, including Best Country Album. Lynn brought a strong female point of view to country music and was seen as a homespun advocate for ordinary women. Well, they say that I'm too country. The way I look and sound. Her career spanned half a century, generating dozens of number one songs. From humble beginnings to country music royalty, Lynn never dreamed of being such a success. I don't think it, you can dream for success because I think it's more or less you have to work for it. Her hard work paid off with a lifetime of awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. And as for inspiring future performers, she said they needed to be one of three things. Great, different or first, and I just happened to be different because I started writing my own songs and didn't really realize that the things that I was writing about, nobody wanted to talk about them, they were just doing them, you know? Loretta Lynn will be missed in that voice, voice. Always a special place in my heart because my father was actually a coal miner when I was very oh. young. So that song always correlates yeah. with me a little bit. Let's talk about her a little bit more because she actually has some ties to Hawaii. So let's talk about where she's lived. So if you know her story at all, you've heard of Butcher Holler, and that's where she grew up. That's her childhood home that still exists today. This picture from the Kentucky Tourism website. So, you know, fame brought with it success and money. So she was able to upgrade her living conditions there in Tennessee. Wow. She eventually moved into this mansion right here. She owns the whole town it's in now. It's called Hurricane Mills. She has all sorts of tours attraction, tourism attractions you can visit around there. Different tours, cabins, things like that you can visit. It's a beautiful area of the country, Appalachia. Gorgeous. Mm. All right. So what is the local connection? It is very, very cool. It's on the Kona side of the Big Island. Uh, it's at Kiholo Bay there. Check out this house. It still exists today. Not in good condition mm -hmm. at all. She gave it up a number of years ago 
back in the 90s, I think she stopped really coming here because uh, she lost her husband, and that's what I at least saw in some reports. So now it is in the hands of the state. It's still standing, reportedly, but it's in the also being turned over to a nonprofit so they can use it as their headquarters. Very, very cool structure yeah. there. And I just imagine the recordings and fun times she must have had in that building. Yeah, I wonder what the inside looks like. Yeah, the views have to be spectacular, mm -hmm. that's for sure. All right, so let's see what else the internet is talking about yeah, today. Yeah, so using a series of mathematic symbols, Ed Shearing announced a new tour. So an ode to the singer-songwriter's album title, he's calling it the Mathematics Tour. So this is the first time the singer-songwriter will play stadiums in the U.S. in about five years. Sheeran's tour kicks off May 6th and includes 21 dates. And I heard he's awesome. Like yeah, live. I have friends who are just obsessed. Yeah, I'm not in the Super Ed fan club, but mm -hmm. good music, yeah. good story. Yeah. Seems like a nice guy. All right, good news now, and we're still talking entertainment because Cinderella is coming to Broadway, but it's not what you think. Gus Rosendale brings us the details. A season of change on Broadway. As scenery from just closed Come From Away gets moved out right across from another theater on 45th Street with a big announcement. Without further ado, I would like to uh, bring out Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber talking about his new production, Bad Cinderella. We are going to open on March the 23rd which is the day after my 75th birthday, so I'm going to be intrigued to see what kind of birthday present I get. Just days after word that Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera was closing in New York in a few months, his new show is set to extend a streak that has seen at least one of his productions on Broadway since 1979. But it was a bumpy ride in London for this new show, where it was simply called Cinderella. Now, the road to Broadway hasn't been entirely smooth for this production. It was delayed because of COVID, and then when it eventually did open, despite great reviews, it closed pretty quickly. But now, here in New York, it has a new name and also some new songs. Thank you for that incredible introduction, Andrew Lloyd Webber. A sentence I never thought I'd ever say in my entire life. There's also a new leading lady. Lenady Henna stars in the title role. This is so much bigger than me, and it's an honor of a lifetime to be able to represent my Latin community. The Brooklyn native, who calls herself a proud Dominican American, says fairy tale princesses usually didn't look like her when she was growing up in Cypress Hills. Bad Cinderella also tackles modern themes like body shaming and image, along with same sex relationships. Well, the Cinderella we all know, she's quiet, she's obedient, she's polite. This Cinderella's not. She takes up space, she speaks her mind. And the production joins dozens of new shows opening soon, a sign of optimism in the industry and the city. I mean, this is a very historical, special time on Broadway. It's quite an honor. It is, it is, especially after the shutdown. Um, any opportunity I'm just so grateful for, and this is just beyond my wildest dreams. Previews of Bad Cinderella begin February 17th. Yeah, it looks interesting. I yeah. check it out. There's so many new Broadway shows, as they mentioned. Uh, we've reported in the past, even Back to the Future, getting mm -hmm. a musical, which you know I would be excited to of see. Of course. My favorite. Yeah, and you're going to be headed to Broadway soon. Oh, here we come. Here we come. Lucky. New York City. <laughs> well, today is World Animal Day. The goal of the day is to bring people together to improve the lives of animals. Now, among the ways you can mark the day, you can volunteer at an animal shelter or even go adopt a pet from one. So World Animal Day dates back to the year 1925. Oh, cute. Oh. Shout out to Stanley. Happy <laughs> Stanley, yes. Ashley's doggy. I'm best. sure he missed you. We missed you as well. Oh, he was, yeah. yeah. It was so good to see him. All right, guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now. I was just staying on that animal video a little bit longer for you. <laughs> Looking cute. Uh, don't forget, we have all sorts of updates coming in from throughout the day. You saw what was developing there at HPD. We have a reporter working on that story. Of course, we're going to keep tracking what's going on in Florida as well. So keep checking your H&N digital platforms for updates. Ashley's back first at 4 on KHNL. And don't forget, podcasting all the time right here at Hawaii News Now. Have a good one. See ya.